Welcome back to another summer movie marathon. And this week, I wanted to revisit the classic Hollywood horror comedies. Great, because the jokes kept me laughing and interested during those moments of mystery when I was a kid, as well as making myself and the audiences of the time dropping their guard right before a scare. So, thrills and chills. Now, I got into the old black and white horror comedies of Hollywood uh, thanks to my grandparents mostly because my grandmother would always try to get me to watch Bob Hope's The Ghost Breakers when I was little. And for a while, I'm like, no, I'm not going to like it. It's probably not funny. And she said, no, no, trust me, you'll enjoy it. And grandparents are always right that way. <laughs> so I am thankful. From an early age, I was introduced not only to great people like Bob Hope, Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy, The Three Stooges, The Marx Brothers, great for comedy, but also black and white movies in general. And especially these classic horror comedies not only uh, made me interested in wanting to learn all the jokes and keep repeating that, but also from a filmmaking standpoint, because I think it's important to learn the early techniques and just admire still the lighting techniques and how they did sound. There's just something a, a, a bit more primal about the music. So the three films that I would like to talk about today are my three favorite horror comedies. And luckily, they're all from the same era. And because you're such a wonderful audience, thirsty for knowledge, I thought I might include a few quotes that I found either on the Wikipedia pages for these films or on IMDb, just to give credit where credit is due. And I would highly encourage anyone to look at those pages for more information if you're curious. The Cat and the Canary is a 1939 American horror comedy film directed by Elliot Nugent, starring Bob Hope and Paulette Goddard, Gail Sondergaard, John Beale, and Douglas Montgomery. It's a remake of the 1927 silent film The Cat and the Canary, which was based on the 1922 play of the same name by John Willard. I found an excerpt of the play online, but quickly realized I probably couldn't put it on stage because of one of the character names and it being, quote unquote, of an older time. Unless they'd give permission to change it. And of course, the role of Wally Campbell was written for Bob Hope specifically and not originally in the stage script, which makes sense considering his first scene in the house has him performing over the top jokes that don't quite seem in character yet. But maybe that's also because his character hasn't yet had reason to worry. I don't think I can play the examples here, but the simple notes of music in the older sound recordings also heightened the tension for me. There's just something about the strings and brass instruments of the black and white films that gave a more ominous or feeling of danger compared to today. Now me personally, I actually did not get to see The Cat and the Canary until much later in my adult years when I got the Bob Hope uh, 10 movie classic collection only because I saw my favorite movie of his included in it, The Ghost Breakers. And of course, The Cat and the Canary instantly drew me to it in the same way. And also interesting to find out, The Cat and the Canary was made right before The Ghost Breakers. The Ghost Breakers is a 1940 American mystery horror comedy film directed by George Marshall and starring Bob Hope and Paulette Goddard, Willie Best, Richard Carlson, also known for Hold That Ghost and The Creature from the Black Lagoon, Paul Lucas, known for 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and a young Anthony Quinn. It was adapted by screenwriter Walter DeLeon as the third film version of the 1909 play The Ghost Breaker by Paul Dickey and Charles W. Goddard. The first two silent films, now considered lost, were filmed in 1914 and 1922. The Cat and the Canary became such a big hit that Paramount began looking for another old dark house stage play that could be turned into a similar vehicle for the pair. They had this film in theaters less than eight months later. When I was younger, I only liked the first act of the film in the city and got bored once they were in Cuba, but maybe that's because I preferred the laughs. Now I appreciate the haunted castle and the cinematography and the tension a lot more. 
Both films greatly boosted Bob Hope and his career, and upon listening to commentary tracks by film historians, I loved finding out that horror comedies were popular in the silent era, fell out for a while, and then made a comeback thanks to these two Bob Hope vehicles. Paramount's success also inspired Universal to jump on the horror comedy bandwagon and make their own haunted house picture, which is coincidentally my favorite. Hold That Ghost is a 1941 horror comedy film starring the comedy team of Abbott and Costello and featuring Joan Davis, Evelyn Ankers, also seen in The Wolfman and became a leading lady of universal horror in the 40s, and Richard Carlson. Originally titled Don't Look Now, and then under a working production title Oh Charlie, the film was made before In the Navy, but delayed because of the success of Buck Privates, so that Universal could release another service-themed film to follow up. This allowed the studio time to film additional scenes with Ted Lewis and the Andrews sisters so as to please the audiences. Interestingly enough, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello's moving candle routine that they used to do in burlesque was the inspiration for this film. I did not know that, given how late it occurs. I thought it was the bedroom change sequence because of the length and reoccurrence of the gag. But apparently both were a great focal point. I really enjoyed the musical numbers and would still love to see things like that in modern day horror comedy movies, though the combination of the two seemed to be a rare sight anymore, unless made independently or as a TV series. This film is also where I was introduced to the Blue Danube, so I can't hear it without wanting to reenact this hilarious sequence. It seemed like many of the following Abbott and Costello films would introduce maybe lesser known but extremely talented singers and dancers to nationwide audiences, thus boosting them to stardom. Nowadays, it seems more common to only showcase the celebrities for the sake of marketing. Personally, I loved the house and the fact that the screenwriters did a clever job of combining and spoofing both the gangster genre and the haunted house genre. Yet another formula I wish could still be done today. I also like to say that Hold That Ghost and many of the other Abbott and Costello Universal pictures are of course on Blu-ray and I just found out the other day from perusing Blu-ray.com that the two best Bob Hope films, in my opinion, The Cat and the Canary and The Ghost Breakers are coming to Blu-ray in September, I believe, with uh, film critic commentary. So like, great, even more information I may not have known about the film. I always want to find out more info and trivia. So thank you folks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I certainly have. And if you'd be so kind as to hit the like and subscribe buttons, I would greatly appreciate it. So until next time, be excellent, and I'll see you in the next moving picture.